Today, we're going to talk about uh, a sample that we just released, uh, and which is a sample about how to create uh, with SharePoint Framework uh, a dashboard uh, using uh, tools, libraries, and techniques uh, that we have uh, available uh, when developing Microsoft 365 solutions. And the overall idea of this sample is to provide developers uh, a solution that they take inspiration from if they want to create something like that. So what's inside the sample I'm going to show you? Uh, there is a Teams personal app, uh, which is configurable uh, on a per user basis. Uh, we have uh, a multiple tabs uh, in the uh, personal app. It can be also used as a client-side web part in SharePoint Online. The UI is fully integrated with Microsoft Teams. And we also have uh, an example of automated provisioning uh, of uh, artifacts like fields and lists and content in uh, uh, true Microsoft in the uh, Microsoft 365 workloads uh, in order to do the uh, setup uh, of a set of demo items and demo content to show the output and the UI of the uh, sample. So uh, what are the challenges that we face developing this solution while well, uh, building a solution with a UI fully integrated with uh, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, uh, as well as uh, the capability to handle uh, the configuration of the team personal apps? Uh, the support for multiple tabs. We need to see how you can do that whenever you want to create a SharePoint framework solution and how to make it uh, uh, configurable also in SharePoint Online and only from the uh, UI of uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, and of course, the provisioning of the content and the technical solutions that we uh, put in place to achieve uh, these goals are, of course, the SharePoint framework. We use Microsoft Graph under the cover of the sample, as well as uh, why not the Graph Toolkit to render the UI and to uh, uh, use some custom templates uh, for a better rendering of the UI of this uh, sample dashboard as well as the PMP React controls together with Graph Toolkit and, of course, the PMPJS as the main library to do the uh, code base provisioning inside uh, the solution. To um, support multiple, multiple tabs, we had to create a, a, a manual manifest for Teams. And in order to uh, support the custom uh, configuration on a per user basis, we are relying on the application personal folder capability that we have uh, through Microsoft Graph. So this is just to give you an idea of what we are going to uh, briefly see in the uh, upcoming demo. And that's why I'm now moving uh, to the actual demo environment to show you uh, the, uh, the sample in action and then uh, to play with the uh, code base. So first of all, this is the uh, URL of the uh, sample on under the SP DevFX uh, web parts uh, repository under samples and React Teams lead dashboard is the name of the new sample. In Teams, this is how the sample looks like. So you see it's a dashboard based on a set of charts, but with some content which is personal for the user. In fact, this is a personal app in Teams. You can see your calendar. You can see your task in to do. You can see documents or items which are interesting for you, as well as you can have an additional tab for providing settings in order to configure, just for the sake of having some demo data, in order to configure uh, lists, items, uh, and fields in SharePoint Online, as well as uh, eventually demo items in your calendar or in a to-do list, just for the sake of having uh, uh, close to real content rendering in the UI of these. Uh, uh, component hosted in Teams. Component that, of course, can be hosted also as a web part in SharePoint Online, as we all know. And if you want to configure this one in SharePoint Online, of course, you can just edit the page and use the uh, property pane of SharePoint Online. But in the property pane of uh, uh, the SharePoint framework web part in SharePoint Online, we basically have the same functionalities that we have in the settings tab inside our sample solution. So how did we uh, build this solution? Let me switch to Visual Studio Code. And mainly there is one web part which is rendered both in SharePoint Online and in uh, Teams. And this is the Lead Assist Dashboard web part. In this web part, in the uh, on init method, uh, aside from taking care of the uh, Teams context, so we 
uh, identify if we are hosted in Teams or not. And if we are hosted in Teams, we apply uh, the uh, theming of Teams in order to have a proper UI consistent with the user experience of Teams. We, of course, need to get a reference to the graph client uh, object in order to uh, use Microsoft Graph. But we also play with one of the, I think, interesting functionalities of this sample, which is the storage of settings inside the uh, app folder of the app in which we are. And in fact, we created a setting service class in which we use Microsoft Graph Client to talk with the app root folder of OneDrive for Business for the current application. This is an API that we have in Graph, which allows us to store in the uh, file storage of OneDrive on a per user, per app basis, uh, one or multiple uh, files that we need to use for setting purposes or for whatever reason you want to have a set of files for your application. By doing that, well, we can get the set simply by reading in the app root of our app the files and specifically we are looking for one file which is called in our solution lead dashboard settings.json but you can read and you can eventually write your settings if you will put the content of for example a json file into the url of the app root folder in onedrive this is really useful and the overall result will be that from a onedrive point of view in the apps folder of uh, uh, every user, there will be a subfolder representing the app. And that's interesting because we are in SharePoint framework and most likely we know that from a SharePoint framework point of view, unless we use the domain isolated model, every single application will be under the same app. And in fact, we have a SharePoint Online Client Accessibility Web Application Principle, which is the name of the Azure Active Directory app under the cover of every SharePoint framework solution, at least by default. And in there, we have our JSON file with all of our settings. Of course, if you want to have your own folder, you can create an isolated domain web part and that will have a dedicated application. So that's one of the interesting part of the story. Moreover, when we render the application, of course, we use MGT, so we register a provider of MGT uh, from authentication point of view, which is the SharePoint uh, provider in order to use the context of SPFX. And we also configure PMPJS because we use that one as well. In the rendering, we just rely on a React component, which is this one. And in this component, at the very end, aside from loading through a data service, all of the content that we want to render and the data service, we rely on PMPJS and Graph to read all of the data that we need. But in the component, when we do the actual rendering, we simply render a dashboard control of PMP controls. And in that one, we configured all of the widgets, so all of the uh, sections of the uh, dashboard in order to uh, have uh, uh, the chart control of PMP controls, for example. So this method will simply give us back uh, a chart control of PMP controls, as well as we can eventually use, if I go back, we can eventually use the MGT components, like in this uh, widget where we say get my day tab, and this one will give you back the agenda MGT component, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit component, with a set of custom templates that we defined right here in this file in order to have a custom rendering for all of the items that we want to see in the rendering of the agenda. And the same applies for the uh, to-do list. So this is to give you an idea idea of what you can do when you want to create a solution with a nice UI, fully integrated with Teams, based on all of the uh, components that we have. But there is more. We want to have, uh, we wanted to have two tabs in our personal app. And that's why in the Teams folder of our solution, we manually created a manifest. And in there, we configured two different static tabs, one targeting uh, the lead access dashboard that we just saw, and another one targeting the settings web part, which is the one providing the buttons to configure and to set up the solution. And in order to do that in SPFX, you simply need to manually create a manifest. You have to zip the manifest and the icons into a file called Teams SPFX app.zip, which is well documented on docsmax.com. You leave this file in the Teams folder, and when you will build and package your SharePoint framework solution, well, this zip file will be embedded in the SPPKG file so that when you will do uh, the upload of your SharePoint framework package solution into the app catalog and you will click on sync to Teams, 
the uh, engine on the server side and uh, on the SharePoint online side of the story will recognize that you have a custom zip file and will use that one to register your application in Teams rather than creating on the fly a manifest and registering every single web part that you have configured to be available in a team personal app. So this is yet another interesting functionality that we have in SharePoint framework whenever we want to create uh, uh, more complex solutions which do not rely on a single web part but rely on multiple web parts which will become multi multiple tabs um, in uh, uh, your solution. Again, um, and furthermore, Talking about what we did, we are using MBT. So in the uh, package.json file, we are referencing the NGT React in the NGT SPFX uh, packages because we want to have a full integration of MGT inside uh, uh, SharePoint framework. And that's why we can then say in the uh, web part uh, that we register the uh, provider, the SharePoint provider as the global provider for uh, MGT. So, this is just to give you an idea of what is quite easily doable using uh, uh, all the rich components and controls that we have available through PMP and through Microsoft in order to easily create a real or a close to real solution hosted in Teams and SharePoint Online. You also have some references on the slide deck, which I'm going to share also in the chat if I can talk and copy and paste at the same time. Let me see if I can do that. Yes looks like I can. So here is a list of uh, useful links that you can keep into account if you want to dig into the topics that we saw. For example, the idea of using the uh, uh, custom settings stored in the uproot folder uh, comes from a blog post by Valdek, which shared uh, this brilliant idea of using this functionality for storing settings, as well as you can find links uh, to all the other libraries and tools that we are using in this solution. And I think that's all for me, Patrick. So back to you. Thank you. Fantastic, Paolo. That's a really fully realized sample demo there. Uh, lots of stuff for folks to learn. Uh, in that code, uh, certainly uh, encourage everybody to check that out, try that out, uh, just great stuff. So thank you, Paolo, for sharing that with us.